One download every three seconds of Blender. But here's the problem. Most of them will fall into the same mistakes I made when I started. If I had to go back and begin again, these are the five mistakes I'd avoid as a complete newbie. Mistake number one, starting projects that are too ambitious too soon. So you finished the default donut tutorial and now you're feeling like the chosen one of 3D. Naturally, your next project idea is a full-length Pixar quality animated short with explosions, dragons, and an entire cityscape, all made by just you, of course. What could go wrong? Well, pretty much everything. I know the excitement is real when you're starting out, but biting off a mega project straight away is a one-way ticket to Burnout City. Starting too ambitious too soon ultimately leads to disappointment and discouragement. You spend hours or weeks on something way over your head, and when it doesn't meet the lofty vision in your mind, it's soul-crushing. Newbies often underestimate how much work even simple projects take when you lack experience. Instead of a finished masterpiece, you end up with an unfinished blend file and a lot of frustration. How to avoid it? Start small and build your foundation. Seriously, small wins will keep you motivated. Do that one simple character, that one room interior, or even just a well-modeled coffee mug. Focus on learning core skills, modeling, basic lighting, etc. with manageable projects. Each little project you actually finish is a building block of confidence. As you level up, you can gradually tackle bigger and more complex scenes. Remember, you don't start climbing Everest before you've even hiked a hill. Likewise, conquer the Blender Bunny Slope before attempting the Mount Everest of 3D projects. Mistake number two, ignoring scale and real-world units. In my early Blender days, I modeled with complete disregard for real-world scale. I'd have a tiny coffee cup that was literally the size of a skyscraper next to a couch that was the size of a Tic Tac. I just eyeballed everything without checking the units. The result? Absolute chaos. Lights wouldn't work right because my scenery was unknowingly 10 kilometers wide. Ignoring scale and real-world units might seem harmless at first. Who cares? It looks fine. But it can cause a domino effect of problems. Blender's physics, lighting falloff, camera clipping, and many add-ons rely on real-world measurements to behave realistically. If your object is 100 times bigger or smaller than it should be, you'll get weird results. For example, simulations might appear to happen in slow motion or super fast. Or let's say you want to 3D print something or export your model to a game engine. If you haven't modeled to a real scale, you're in for a rude surprise when your model imports at the size of Godzilla or a flea. Even collaborating with others becomes tricky if everyone uses different scales. How to avoid it Always mind your units and reference real-world dimensions. A good habit is to use real measurements as a guide. Blender's default cube is 2 meters, about human height. Keep that in mind. If you're modeling a chair, maybe it should be around 1 meter tall, not 20. You can switch on Blender's unit system to metric or imperial if that's your thing and model with those references. This will save you a ton of headaches. Also, apply your scales with Control a after modeling basics so your object's dimensions aren't deceptive. Basically, think like an architect or a product designer for a moment. Measure twice, model once. Your physics sims, lighting, and sanity will thank you. Mistake number three, staying disorganized with assets. Ha, ah, the asset chaos. This one hit me hard. Early on, I'd throw textures, models, HDRIs, and reference images all over the place on my hard drive. My projects had no structure. i dump files into whatever random folder I happened to be in. My Blender file would be on the desktop, one texture in the Downloads folder, another texture somewhere in Documents, Untitled Folder, Final, you get the idea. It was fine for the first hour, but as the project grew, it became a complete scavenger hunt to find anything. And if I dared to reopen that project a month later, missing files everywhere. I'd see those pink texture not found materials and want to cry. Revisiting an old project felt like defusing a bomb, trying to remember where on earth I put that one crucial image or dot blend asset. Throwing textures, models, and references into random folders makes projects impossible to manage, especially when you're revisiting them later on. Trust me, nothing kills your creative flow faster than spending 30 minutes searching for that one texture.jpg you misplaced. It's a perfect recipe for frustration, and it's especially painful if you ever collaborate or switch computers. This is the perfect point to highlight how I eventually solved this organizational nightmare. I discovered a tool that put an end to my disorganization headache, Connector Suite. It's basically an asset management tool that keeps your textures, models, and other files neatly organized and easily accessible in one place. 
Head over to the Connector Suite website and download the free Connector app. Once you've got it downloaded, come to Integration and select Blender. It also has all of these other integrations, so this isn't just limited to Blender. Once you've got the add-on installed, when you right-click, you'll see you've got a couple different options here. You can either add a whole scene as an asset, selected objects, or materials. Say we wanted to save these two objects as assets. You would select them both, right-click, go to Add Selected Objects, and you can save them either as a single asset or as multiple assets. I'll choose Multiple Assets. On the right, you can choose the Render Preview style. You'll notice you can't name these assets here. That's because we're saving multiple assets, so instead you'll use the names you have them as in the outliner. Select the folder you'd like to save them to, these are a few that I've set up, then hit Add Assets. Over here in Connector Suite, we can see the two assets have been added to our library. To bring them into Blender, simply click and drag them into the Blend file. Here, there's a few different options we can choose from. We can either replace the objects already in our scene with our asset, link or append the asset, or we can extract the material from the asset and link or append that also. For now, let's link our object into the scene. Linking an object will use less memory as it simply references the object from the original file, but we won't be able to make edits to the object. If we instead choose to append the file, it will make a copy of the original object and allow us to make edits to it. For materials, it's a similar process. Select the material you'd like to save as an asset, right-click, go to Add Materials option, and select Single Asset for this demonstration. Now save your asset into the folder you want, and it'll show up in Connector Suite. Just like before, click and drag the material into the scene, choose whether you'd like to link or append the material, then select the objects you'd like to apply the material to. For objects that have more than one material already applied to them, you can select which specific material you'd like to replace. If you're interested in learning more, check out the link to Connector Suite in the description below. Mistake number four, not naming objects in the outliner. Organization isn't just about your files and assets outside Blender, it's also crucial inside Blender. And one of the simplest forms of organization that I absolutely ignored as a newbie is naming your objects properly in the outliner. I'd have scenes with dozens of objects all proudly named cube.001, cube.002, cube.057, you get the picture. My outliner was basically a minefield of generically named items, and when a scene got complex, it became impossible to find anything. Is sphere.042 the left headlight of the car or the donut on the table? It was chaos. Staying disorganized inside your .blend file by leaving default names will 100% come back to bite you. It might not seem like a big deal when your scene has, say, a cube and a plane, but fast forward to a larger project with hundreds of objects, rigs, lights, and collections, if they're all named gibberish, you're in for a world of pain. Animating or editing becomes a nightmare because you can't quickly select the right object. Using modifiers or drivers? Good luck picking the right target from a list of empty objects that all look the same. And if you ever hand that file off to someone else, they'll think you created it by headbutting the keyboard. How to avoid it? Name your objects. Get in the habit of double-clicking on cube.001 in the outliner and giving it a meaningful name as soon as you create something new or important. Or even quicker, select the object, press F2, and name it from here. Even something simple like table leg or window frame is leaks better than an army of default cubes. Use names and even organize objects into collections with meaningful labels. It takes a few seconds per object, but it saves hours of searching and prevents so much confusion later on. Think of it like keeping your toolbox organized. Sure, you could throw all your tools in a big bin and rummage every time you need a screwdriver, but wouldn't it be nicer if you knew exactly where to find what you need? Future you and any teammates will breathe a sigh of relief when opening a file and seeing a clean, labeled scene. It's a small discipline that makes a huge difference as your projects get bigger. Mistake number five, trying to learn everything at once. Blender is massive. It's not just a modeling program. It's a whole suite of tools, modeling, sculpting, texturing, animation, physics, particles, compositing, you name it. When I discovered this, I went full kid in candy store and attempted to learn everything simultaneously. One day I was following a sculpting tutorial to make a character, the next day I was dabbling in particle systems to create fire, the next I was rigging a cat, then playing with fluid simulations because why not? My brain was juggling so many things that nothing really stuck. I'd spend 10 minutes on one topic, get distracted by another cool feature and bounce around. End result? I was busy for sure, but I wasn't actually making real progress in any one area. 
It was like trying to read five books at once but only a few pages of each. You don't get the full story from any of them. Trying to learn everything at once is a recipe for overwhelm and burnout. Blender has a steep learning curve already. Don't make it a sheer vertical climb by piling on every possible subject from day one. I know it's tempting. You see awesome character sculpts, flashy physics sims, and motion graphics, and you want to do all of it now. But if you spread your focus too thin, you end up with a surface level knowledge of lots of things and mastery of none. It can really be discouraging because you might feel like you're putting in tons of hours but not getting the results you want simply because you haven't given any single skill enough time to properly develop. I've been down that road of Blender ADHD and it led me to a lot of half-finished experiments and confusion. How to avoid it Focus on one thing at a time, especially at the start. Think of learning Blender like building a pyramid. You need a strong base first. That base might be modeling and basic lighting, for example. Get comfortable with those fundamentals by doing a few modeling-centric projects. Once you've got that down, branch out to another area, say sculpting or animation, and give it proper attention. It's totally fine and good to eventually learn multiple aspects of Blender. You just don't need to tackle them all in the same week. Also, try to integrate new skills gradually. For instance, if you've gotten the hang of modeling, maybe add a bit of simple rigging to your next project or a splash of particle effects to a scene. Something to gently stretch your skills without tearing you apart. Remember that Blender, and 3D in general, is a journey. Pace yourself. It's better to be really solid at the basics than to be meh at everything. As the saying goes, jack of all trades, master of none. Master something, then move on to conquer the next thing. Your future self will thank you when you actually finish projects and see real improvement, rather than having a hard drive full of abandoned test files. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Bye!